Hey there, traders. Welcome back for episode number 152 from the Stock Bandit. I'm glad that you joined me for this episode. And as it is on Sunday, we're going to take a look at the major market averages, kind of look at where this market is, a good big picture view as we head into a brand new week of trading. Now, it's been a couple of months since I brought one of these videos to you. I've had some you know, things going on uh, personally. They're all good though. Um, bought a new house, welcomed a new baby into the family. And so, you know, the personal demands uh, for me have been a little bit greater in the last two months and whenever that's the case the free stuff is the first to go I still uh, uh, you know keep up my obligations to the member only website at the stockbanet.com uh, but the free stuff does kind of get you know the shaft when uh, whenever there's other things going on with me so back to the task at hand let's take a look at the indices here last week was a big week for the market uh, you know they did make some steady gains but more importantly, they you know put some of these trading ranges in their rearview mirror. So for the Nasdaq, we've been caught in this roughly 140 point trading range here for the past several weeks. Well, now last week we did clear the upper end of that trading range with a breakout through 25.92. We finished at 26.37, so not a ton of space between current prices and where the upper end of that range is. But we've seen some good steady progress over the past few days. And speaking of steady. The Nasdaq is now up eight in sessions in a row, <laughs> uh, five and a half percent during that stretch, and so uh, that's a nice run. Now, you know, are we getting a little bit short-term stretched? Maybe uh, we certainly could continue higher in the short term before we put in a rest or some kind of pullback. But I do want to mention that out of this channel here, um, you know, basically this is a 140-point range. So whether you want to call it a a channel or a rectangle pattern. Um, nonetheless, generally when these occur and we get a breakout, you can typically take the height of this pattern and add it to the breakout. So in this case, we'd be taking 2592, we'd be adding 140 points, and that would take us roughly to 2730, you know, give or take. So I zoomed out here on the chart. Uh, we've got a, a, a July 07 high and a December 07 high, which you know, we're eclipsed during that stretch, but two different times the NASDAQ rallied up and paused at the same 2730 neighborhood. Okay, now that's not an exact science, it's not down to the exact point, but it would not be a stretch to see this index over the, you know, the coming weeks make a push toward that level, especially out of this trading range here that it's just now trying to leave behind. So, you know, I don't expect that to take place this week. Um, I suppose anything is possible in the market, but I'm just bringing that to you as kind of a big picture, next level type of thing. That's the next spot to be looking for for the NASDAQ. But currently showing some good, you know, modest day-to-day -day strength and not really letting up at this point with a good solid finish on Friday, indicating no fatigue at this point. S&P 500 did push past this 1227 level, which you know was the early November high that had been serving as some resistance. We saw a nice rally off this 1173 level uh, two weeks ago, a big push higher initially, and then several days of rest before last week we finished on a good strong note, closing out at 1240, you know, obviously above this 1227 zone. So S&P acting really well. It's also up seven of the past eight days and that's a 5.7% run off the support level for the S&P. The Russell, this has been the index to really watch. It's been acting great in recent months. We've seen you know, this double bottom uh, really validated with a nice push through the highs in between. Nice channel move higher here uh, during you know, late summer, early fall. We then rested here with you know, a little bit of channeling action. We rallied up, you know, stopping just shy of the spring highs. We then entered this multi-week trading range, and then more recently we've pushed on through that 745 high, and we haven't looked back yet. Uh, this index is up seven of eight sessions in a row now, and it's also up 6.7% just during the stretch from right here. So really good leadership here in small caps. 
lots of recent momentum. No reason to fight this move right now taking place in the Russell. And finally, the Dow, which is currently lagging, uh, you know, really respecting this uh, 10,920 area, which coincidentally is the no, I'm sorry, the uh, mid-May bounce high. You know, funny how the technicals tend to work. You know, we saw that serve as some resistance in here. Once it was cleared, it then served as some support. We rallied up, pulled back, and tested that area again. Got within you know less than 10 points from there, and now we've rallied back up and we're challenging this November high. Uh, interestingly, last week we got within one point of that high before backing off a little bit. So, you know, short term we've got a little bit of support in here at the 11,320, and we've got key resistance up here in the short term at 11,451. So, if we get a close outside of this range, I would expect to see the Dow try and play a little bit of catch up, possibly to, uh, you know, move in lockstep with the S&P and Nasdaq. So. There's a good look at the big picture. I will be posting more frequent videos here again now that things have settled down for me, but I'm glad that you joined me for this episode. Thanks for watching. Trade well out there. I'll see you soon.